Quiapo is among the places considered to be centers of popular religiosity. It is considered to be one of the most popular church in the Philippines because of the devotion to the Black Nazarene. Millions of Filipino families are in one way connected to their devotion. Through the centuries, it has become popular from Luzon to Mindanao. It is also considered a church of the masses. The face of poverty is evident during the early days of Quiapo Church and up to the present. The people instinctively describe Quiapo Church as kanlungan ng mga mahihirap, a home where the poor converge and mingle with other people of different social classes. This is the place where they find a solace and hope for their difficulties. The devotion to the Black Nazarene is felt in the religious expressions of the people. The devotees express their faith in love and gratitude to the Lord. This devotion has influenced this church to be sensitive and responsive to the needs of the people, especially the poor, and assist in the transformation of society. Quiapo Church could be considered as a center of life and faith in the heart and soul of Manila. Quiapo Church began as a small visita of the Franciscan Friars in 1588. It was erected under the pastorship of the Franciscan Antonio de Nombella, the first parish priest. Saint John the Baptist was the patron saint of the parish. A group of Augustinian Recollect missionaries reached the shores of Manila in May 31, 1606. It was led by Father Benito de San Pablo. They brought him there with a dark image of Jesus Christ from Mexico. The image was made of a strong dark wood, similar to the image of Our Lady of Antipolo. The image was upright but kneeling on one knee and carrying a large cross. The image was enshrined in the first church of the Recoletas at Extramuros in Bagumbayan. San Juan Bautista was the patron of that church. The image was known as the Black Nazarene. On April 1620, the Cofradia de Jesus Nazareno, a fraternity of gentlemen in Manila with strong devotions to the Black Nazarene, was established. This cofradia spread out from Luzon all the way to the Mindanao regions. This co-fraternity of Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno was officially authorized by a papal bull issued by Pope Innocent X in Rome on April 20, 1651. The Obras Pias de Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno was founded on December 13, 1749. It had a remarkable success in the past to a point of maintaining missions in the region of Mindanao. As the devotees surged, a bigger church of the Ricoletos in Intramuros became the new home of the Black Nazarene, until finally, upon the order of the Archbishop of Manila, Basilio Sancho de Santa Justa y Rufina, the image of the Black Nazarene was transferred to Quiapo Church by the year 1767. Two popes recognized the outstanding and exceptional devotion of the Filipino people to the Black Nazarene, thus earning the papal bull of Pope Innocent X in 1650, canonically establishing the Cofradia de Jesus Nazareno and Pope Pius VII in the 19th century, granting indulgences to those who piously pray before the image of the Black Nazarene of Quiapo. The church which houses the Black Nazarene suffered series of damages due to various disasters and catastrophes, but miraculously, the image of the Black Nazarene was spared. These trials strengthened the faith of the devotees. The enormous fires in 1791 and 1929, the earthquakes of 1645 and 1863, and the destructive bombing of Manila in 1945 during World War II led to the cooperation of its devotees to help in the reconstruction and expansion of the church. During the 1980s, the devotees have significantly grown. Monsignor Jose Abriol initiated the expansion of the main structure to accommodate the growing number of devotees. In September 28, 1987, the newly remodeled church was blessed by His Eminence Jaime Cardinal Sin. He, together with the devotees and with the help of papal nuncio Bruno Torpigliani, sought recognition of the church as a minor basilica. On December 11, 1987, 
His Holiness Pope John Paul II granted the recognition of Capo Church as a minor basilica. The recognition of the church is a testimony to the devotion's role in strengthening faith in Jesus Christ and its contribution to the religiosity of the Filipino people. In 2006, His Eminence Gaudencio B. Cardinal Rosales led the celebrations and began the procession, which was a commemoration of the January 9 translation at the former Bagumbayan, now called Luneta, where the first church that housed the Black Nazarene was once located. The country was surprised at the large turnout of the devotees that a year after, celebrations of the translation would begin at the same place. In 2007, Cardinal Rosales began a pastoral board to lead in the administration of the then-going church. A new building was bought at Evangelista Street to house the increasing ministries that serves the growing number of devotees. A foundation was begun, reminiscing the original Obras Pias to assist poor churches in their evangelization as well as to help in the response and rehabilitation of communities affected by disasters. A corporation was also established to assist the relief efforts of the church. In 2015, Cardinal Rosales, now Archbishop Emeritus of Manila, inaugurated the bronze statue at the plaza in Carriedo as a testimony to the devotees' faith to the Black Nazarene and their thanksgiving to the patron Saint John the Baptist who reminds all to convert and follow Jesus. Today, Quiapo Church is famous because of the Traslacion event every January 9. However, not known to many, Quiapo Church has been silently contributing its services, not just for Quiapo, but for the whole Philippine Church, as well as reaching out to poor international faith-based communities. This was achieved through the grace of God and the cooperative efforts of the clergy, staff, and its volunteers. The following is a rundown of the different offices and ministries of Capel Church. Parish Administrative Offices The Rector's Office The Rector's Office oversees the different offices and ministries in helping them achieve their purposes and objectives. The Rector initiates programs as guided and approved by the Pastoral Board of Capel Church. He implements the directives of the Archbishop of Manila and the Pastoral Board. He manages the different departments and sees to it that the needs of the parishioners, devotees, and those seeking assistance from Capel Church is properly attended to. The Rector's Office takes care of communications and the files of the Office. It coordinates the requests with the proper departments. It coordinates the visits of the pilgrim images as well as the donations of images to various dioceses. It decides on the donations given to various individuals and institutions within its approving authority. It coordinates the use of the vehicles and the facilities of the parish. It receives visitors, requests, and coordinates the meetings of the parish council as well as the requests of the organizations and various departments. It also coordinates with various church and government, as well as non-government officials regarding matters of the parish and the shrine. The Finance Department The Finance Department maintains the income and allocation of resources for the programs and activities of the parish. They also safeguard the assets of the parish and provide sufficient information for management's use. The Collections and Deposits Department is in charge for the overall monitoring of the collections. It involves the frontline cashiers for received donations and offerings and the counting department for the collections and box donations. The disbursement department handles all outgoing expenses, which includes payments to suppliers as well as the petty cash custodian. The bookkeeping and accounting department handles all the financial records and together with the property custodian, monitors all properties. A purchasing department takes care of canvassing and purchasing the needs of the church. During disasters, the finance office handles the needed fund generation and allocation as well as preparing the reports for audit. The Physical Plant Department The Physical Plant Department, on the other hand, 
provides the necessary services and support to maintain the parish buildings, grounds and infrastructure, thus allowing the parishioners to exercise their faith and the parish employees to serve the community in the best way. It has two sub-departments, the maintenance department and the utilities department. During disasters, this department leads the rehab efforts which involves shelter and other infrastructure review. It also assists the Lord of the Black Nazarene Foundation in the advice, review, and costing of construction projects. The Human Resource Department The Human Resource Office of Capo Church hopes to support every personnel to be spiritually formed. It also provides training for the employees in order that they may be professionally and integrally formed to become dynamic members of the Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene and the St. John the Baptist Parish Community. The department is responsible for hiring, spiritual formation of personnel, personality development training programs, social and cultural development program, career pathing and continuing education, rationalization and remuneration. The Records Department The Records Department's primary concern is to keep and safeguard the sacramental records of each individual who receive either the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and marriage here in Capo Church. They also assist parishioners in the correction of their records and process those requesting to undergo the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and marriage as well as the needs of those entering convents or seminaries whose records are kept in the parish. The ICT and MIS Department The Information Communications Technology and Management Information Systems Department attends to all the technological needs of the parish in this computer age. It checks, maintains all computer and internet facilities for speedier and efficient delivery of communications and services. It also manages all software and hardware needs of the various offices. It coordinates the broadcasting needs of the parish masses and other programs. It works closely with the Social Communications Ministry, the security services, and manages the sound system and LEDs of the church. It creates a program for managing all information of various departments. It also assists the IT needs of various archdiocesan and CBCP institutions as it shares its resources with them. The Lord of the Black Nazarene Foundation, Incorporated. The Lord of the Black Nazarene Foundation, Incorporated, was founded by Cardinal Rosales. It hopes to contribute to total human fulfillment of people by committing to their integral development through spiritual nourishment, economic growth, and social progress of their communities. The Foundation aims to provide grants for catechetical social services and developmental programs disaster relief and rehabilitation, priestly and religious formation of church-based institutions which are financially in need, to monitor program implementation of grants provided, to manage fund generation and sustainability of programs of the foundation, to network with government, civic and church institutions in the fulfillment of their goals, to evaluate and improve on programs and approaches for the betterment of the services of the foundation. The Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene Nazareno Incorporated The Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene Nazareno Incorporated was established to assist the parish in its disaster relief responses as well as to provide affordable goods and food for the parishioners. The Mary's Corner aspires to be one of the first to provide immediate action in helping the community when disaster strikes with their sufficient stock and ease of access to supplies. The Joseph Snook aims to provide the people inside or outside of the church, employees, organizations, and the churchgoers with affordable and quality food. They also provide a smorgasbord of options and make sure to have a clean and fuss-free surrounding for the customers to enjoy their eating. The Security Department The Security Department of Capo Church aims to maintain a peaceful and safe environment of the parishioners, devotees, and staff of Capo Church. It aims at monitoring possible dangers to life and properties due to potential hazards of criminality, terrorism, or other acts that threaten the lives of persons. Security personnel are required to undergo various seminars and network 
with other institutions, both government and secular, in order to gather information, updates and skills. It maintains the CCTVs and radio for prevention and review of threats and activities. It also cooperates with the police for apprehensions and other assistance for the safety of the parishioners and devotees. The Kitchen Services Department The Kitchen Services Department provides healthy meals for the parish staff and the clergy. It also assists the parish on special occasions for their food needs. During disasters and relief operations, the kitchen personnel makes an extra effort to provide food for the victims of calamities. It is staffed with a manager, nutritionist, cooks, inventory staff, and assistant cooks. It checks on supplies, equipment, and the sanitation of the cooking and eating environments. Parish Ministries for Integral Transformation The Formation Institute Ministry The Formation Institute Ministry continues the mission to form the volunteers and the devotees to be a community of persons with fullness of life witnessing to the Kingdom of God. The Institute's programs and activities include providing ongoing formations, organizing retreats and recollections, and maintaining the catechetical program of the parish and its schools. It also organizes other popular devotional practices like the Pabasa, catechesis for the Twelve Apostles and Angels, devotional activities for the Blessed Virgin Mary for the month of May and the Living Rosary. The Parish Youth and Children's Ministry The youth today have many difficulties in their growth. This ministry helps strengthen and deepen the youth's relationship with Christ and provides opportunities for spiritual growth and actualization of faith and encourage the youth in community involvement and mission of the church. It also helps in organizing activities which provide opportunities for personal growth and instill social behavior that includes self-discipline, sense of responsibility, and gives them a chance to pursue their studies. The children and youth undergo, participates, and attends ongoing formations, recollections and retreats, seminars, church advocacies, cenaculo, children's gift giving, May flower offering and catechesis, procession, outing, fellowship, workshop, youth gathering, and many more. The Family and Life Ministry The Family and Life Ministry is a ministry of Capital Church whose mission is to serve the church by providing pastoral care that promotes the sacredness of life, sanctity of marriage, and the value of family in different aspects of Christian life that involves faith, relationship, and union with the vision statement of the Archdiocese of Manila. The program and activities of the ministry has two divisions. Formation type, which includes couples program, singles program, life workshop, Happiness Workshop, Morality Seminar, Archdiocesan Program, and Premarital Program. The second one is the Service-Oriented Programs, which consists of Counseling Services, Pastoral Counseling, Natural Family Planning Promotion, and Casalalay Services. Liturgy Department Liturgy Department takes care of attending to all liturgical and other paraliturgical activities in the church in order that the faithful may experience the sacred act of worship and prayer. It attends to the altar, the sacristy, and all the religious paraphernalia, keeping an inventory and safeguarding the religious items, vestments, sacred objects, and furniture of the church. It is responsible for the programs of liturgy, keeping the celebrations and practices of the liturgical calendar and coordinating all the ministries involved in the celebration of liturgical worship. The Music Ministry The Music Ministry is in charge of leading the churchgoers, parishioners, and devotees in singing during the Eucharistic celebrations. The ministry also improve and try to learn new liturgical music according to the season and various values of the liturgy. They also undergo trainings to improve their musical prowess in a liturgical manner. The Social Services and Development Ministry The Social Services Ministry leads the social welfare aspect of the church. It aims to immediately respond to the needs not only to parishioners within the Capo area, but also from different parts of the country. Through the ministry, 
Different kinds of assistance has been implemented and distributed to the needy and less fortunate. The ministry aims to provide service through the crisis intervention programs, medical and burial assistance, night shelter for street dwellers or children, caritas programs, Tawid Kahirapan, and student educational assistance. The Social Development Ministry is for the integral development of the human persons, especially the poor. It provides for long-term assistance to those in need, like scholarships, livelihood assistance, microfinance, formation and seminars, disaster rehabilitation, and climate change adaptation. It hopes to engage in enabling the environment for the beneficiaries' meaningful participation in the development of the community and society. The Disaster Preparedness and Response Ministry The Disaster Preparedness and Response Ministry was organized to respond to the needs of the disaster-affected communities and the pre-identified vulnerable parishes and dioceses based on scientific data and disaster risk assessment methodology. The ministry develops and strengthens partnership with the government, NGOs, and private agencies and institutions. They also help in the improvement of the resilience of communities through preparedness, prevention, mitigation, and advocacies. They engage in community mapping, geographic information systems, an early warning system using text blast, a website social media resource on disaster preparedness and sets up command centers during disasters. The ministry also serves as a resource and training center to other communities. Ongoing formation and training of staff is undertaken regularly. The Social Communications Ministry The Social Communications Ministry is known as the media arm of the parish. The ministry is in charge of the monthly publication of the parish newsletter, wherein it covers the stand and advocacies of the church, parish news, reflections, and testimonies of the devotees. The website kriapochurch.com is regularly updated with parish activities, schedules, and announcements, and where the live stream of our masses can also be found. The Social Communications Ministry also provides the service of documenting the activities of the parish, layouting, producing video productions, and other media requirements for the evangelization needs of the parish. The Legal Assistance Ministry The Legal Assistance Ministry was set up as part of the Archdiocese's response to the needs of its poor constituents. It was encouraged by Cardinal Rosales because of the needs of the Archdiocese. It caters primarily to all who cannot afford the cost of legal services. It has partnered with the San Beda College of Law and its alumni. The ministry does consultation for walk-in clients in coordination with the San Beda Legal Aid Bureau, drafting of legal forms, prison ministry apostolate in coordination with Caritas Manila, court appearance and assistance, and legal education and legal research. The Ministry for Interreligious Dialogue The Ministry for Interreligious Dialogue was established to open the church doors to the dialogue with other faiths. The parish has partnered with the Silsila Dialogue Movement based in Zamboanga to promote a deeper understanding and better relations between Muslims and Christians and with other living faiths and traditions. This ministry envisions a life in dialogue for all Muslims, Christians, and people of other living faiths based on respect, trust, and love for one another. It hopes to move together towards a common experience of harmony, solidarity, and peace. It dialogues with all peoples, regardless of culture and faith, promoting a culture of dialogue with particular emphasis on spiritual values and moves in solidarity with all people to uplift the lives of the less privileged, building a progressive, just, humane, and ecologically sound society. The Capo Church Medical Assistance Ministry The Capo Church Medical Assistance Ministry is organized to respond in the emergency needs of our parishioners, faithful devotees, and even our parish personnel. They are primarily concerned in assessing and stabilizing a person who has been injured and to give a continued care to prevent aggravation of the injury or illness until professional care can be obtained. 
The staff and volunteers undergo drills thrice a year for emergency services, proper lifting, ambulance services, and advanced techniques. The ministry also conducts medical trainings and medical missions. This is Capo Church today. The church in Capo is quite unique in terms of its history, the size of its personnel, and the scope of its services and ministries. Through time, its structures have evolved. It is the hope and the vision of Capo Church today to become a church where the poor is seen as a real treasure. It hopes to aspire to become not an elitist church, but a humble serving church, not a church of entitlement, but a church of stewardship, not a church that dwells in expectations, but a church that dwells in growth, not a church of competition, but a church of collaboration, not a church that emphasizes clericalism, but a church that values the common priesthood and lay involvement, not a church of structures, but a church of the poor, a church that not only practices personal holiness, but encourages pastoral holiness. Kiapo Church has gone a long way. By the grace of God, this church of humble beginnings has grown and hopes to follow its patron's love and will. Viva Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno! <laughs>